Hello and welcome to Dad's Divorce Live. Today we're going to do a Ask a Lawyer segment where we answer some of the questions that you've posed to us uh, through the website. If you'd like to pose a question to Ask a Lawyer, go to dadsdivorce.com and uh, under the resources link you'll find the Ask a Lawyer tab. Go ahead and click on that and you can submit questions through there and we will try to get them answered uh, th with our partnering firm Cordell & Cordell PC. Today, Dan Cuneo is going to answer some of your question, questions, so let's jump right in. Uh, Dan, the first question uh, is, this man is sending us a question saying, he and his wife are separated, and she recently changed the locks on the door of the home, and uh, he had already left uh, without consulting his lawyer, and he was wondering if he's able to legally go back into the property and get his personal belongings out of the house. Uh, she's told him that uh, it, he uh, cannot take his personal belongings and that she's going to sell them uh, or you know, in some other way uh, that she's going to take control of things that, that belong to him. And so uh, we just want to know uh, what happens if you come home uh, and the doors are locked, uh, the, the, the locks have been changed. Uh, what, are your, what are your legal options at that point? Well, the question is kind of fully loaded here, and there's several issues that can be involved. And what I'll try to do is take different scenarios under this situation, which I have seen in my practice, uh, which have been presented. The first one being is what you said, is what happens when the locks are changed, and basically what are the actual rights to someone whose house, uh, he comes home and the locks are changed. So the first uh, question really becomes, is your name on the title? How is the house titled? If the house is titled and joint names and you have just as much right to be on that property and in that property as does your wife. So in that case, if the house is titled in joint names or more importantly really if your name is on the title of the house, then you can if you have to uh, basically just break into your own house. You know, uh, somehow if you know the door is unlocked or go through a window, if I mean just some way to get into the house, mm -hmm. try to do as, as less damage as possible mm -hmm. because obviously it still is your house. But I mean that's really the only way that you can get in. So mm -hmm. as long as your name is on the actual title itself, then you have a legal right to be there. So you can go ahead and break into your own house. Mm -hmm. Now, if your name is not on the title of the house and your wife has changed the locks, then I wouldn't really recommend breaking into the house, even though you have a right to be there because there's probably a marital interest in the house uh, and I'm just taking the facts and assuming that the house was purchased during the marriage. Mm -hmm. So under that case, the house is purchased during the marriage but your name is not on the title, then I wouldn't recommend breaking into the house because you'll just be putting yourself in a precarious situation which down the road will work out for you but on the upfront, on the in the first part of the process, mm -hmm. is really just going to be more of a hassle for you and cause you more time and money. And what I mean by that is if you break into the house even though you have an interest in it and there's no court order preventing you from being on the property or being in the property, then your wife could call the police. You could be arrested either for trespassing or for breaking and entering. And then you have to flush all that out in the, in the court system. And it's just going to cause you more heartache and hassle because you'll be either uh, cited for trespassing or breaking and entering or even worse, arrested. And then we've got to go through the process of trying to get that amended. Okay. So you don't really want to put yourself in that situation. All right. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you to just sort of a follow up on this. If um, now this guy, he's he's been he's been locked out of his own home, and assuming that uh, that his name is still on the on the title to the house, um, and uh, dadsdivorce.com, uh, we we always uh, uh, tell the we want to tell our, our visitors to to do everything they can be to be prepared for what may be coming down the road. Uh, when they finally do go into the courtroom. So let me ask you this, if, if he comes home, his name is still on the title and he's been locked out of his house, uh, whether he left for work that morning or whether he left voluntarily for the last couple weeks, I assume that those two things are no different. Or maybe he's been gone for, for the last couple months, uh, but, but again, no court order telling him he had to be out of the house and, and his name is on the title. Uh, is there a way to prepare himself uh, for what may, 
in other words, does he? Would it be a good idea for him to bring a witness with him when he decides to regain entry? Does he need to call the police and have them with him? Uh, you know, just to cover all the bases mm -hmm. to be sure that, you know, that, that there's no uh, claims of, of abuse or or violence or anything like that. Or is there anything you would recommend uh, as far as him re-entering this house now that he's been locked out of it? It's going to have to be some type of, you know, he's going to have to break something possibly sure. to get in. Well, I mean, ideally, mm -hmm. you'd want to have a copy of, of your name on the title. So, mm -hmm. you know, but not everybody carries around the title right. of the house with them in right. their pocket. So right. if, depending upon what time of day it is, mm -hmm. maybe if you want to be a little proactive, then you could go uh, to the bank and get a copy of the title, mm -hmm. to the mortgage company and get a copy of the title. Mm -hmm. Then you can bring that with you. And if you want, you can call the police, your local police department and have them accompany you mm -hmm. and show them that your name is on the title and that you have a legal right to be here and then that you're going to break into your house. I would advise just if you don't have a copy of the title and it's late at night or you just for whatever reason can't get access to a copy of the title, you can call a local police department and let them know mm -hmm. what you're going to do. Right. But I would, you don't necessarily need the police to be there. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, if you know that your wife and your kids are there, you don't really want to scare them. especially, I mean, let's take this a step further. If you have kids that are home, you right. don't want to break into the house and every kid see you breaking into right, the house. Right. That just doesn't leave a good impression. Right. It doesn't put the good kids in a good position. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then I would take the police, uh, contact the police department mm -hmm. and indicate that you've been locked out of your house. There's no order preventing you from being mm -hmm. on the premises. That's really going to be what's probably um, most important in the police department right? because they're going to know, is there a court order which is preventing you from doing this? If not, they may or they may not get involved. A lot of times, and it's usually probably nine out of 10 times, police departments do not like to get involved in sure. uh, domestic issues mm -hmm. un unless there's some type of violence. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you could call them and they may or may not want to show up. Okay. Now, if there's no children home and you're, you know that your wife is home, I'd give her every opportunity to let you in the house, maybe mm -hmm. call her. Uh, in today's day and age with the technology, send her a text message mm -hmm. or an email, some form of communication, let her know that you're either on your way or that you're there and you want to be let in the house. And if she refuses to let you in the house, your best bet probably is to make sure that you let her know that you are trying to get in and then maybe taking that night and spending it at a friend's house, a relative's house, or even in a hotel, and then contacting your attorney, letting he or she know what the situation is, mm -hmm. and then they can file the appropriate motions with the court. Okay. Now let's let's uh, not to belabor it, but let's uh, let's flip the uh, situation around just a little bit. Um, and the reason I uh, want to keep talking about this is that I, I do see this come up a lot on our website. There there's, seems to be a lot of question uh, when, when the divorce is still new and, and maybe there hasn't been any uh, uh, initial uh, discussions of this with the judge or maybe the papers haven't even been filed yet. There, there is sometimes a, a kind of that gray area of, of how do we coexist and what are the boundaries. Let's, let's flip it the other way. What would be reasons uh, that a man might want to be the one to change the locks. Is it ever advisable? Is it, you know, if she's, mm -hmm. she's at work or maybe she's taking the kids and, and, and or maybe she said I'm leaving. Uh, maybe she's moved out. Is there, is there ever a, uh, a time uh, when it's appropriate for the man to do that, for him to uh, put, you know, new locks on the doors and, and uh, to start kind of separating his life from her life even before the process begins? Well, a lot of times courts really don't like parties playing games with one another. Mm -hmm. And what you're posing is a, is a good uh, scenario because a lot of people, their first instinct is, well, you know, we're not getting along for whatever reason. You know mm -hmm. what? I'm just going to keep her out of the house. I'm right. the one that pays the bills. I'm the one that makes all the utility payments. It's my house. And if this is the game that she wants to play, she wants to leave whatever reason, then then I'm going to exclude her from the, from the property, from the marital residence. Mm -hmm. You go to court, and really what you want to do is you want to position yourself in the best light possible to the judge, because mm -hmm. ultimately it's going to be up to the judge. And quite frankly, the judge doesn't know you from Adam, so he can only mm -hmm. go on what is presented to him and what's on paper. Mm -hmm. So the judge sees that you're playing games and locking your wife out of the house for no reasonable good reason, mm -hmm, sure. then he could potentially penalize you and that you, it, it's, you're really basically going to lose credibility as right. a witness to the court. Now, however, with that being said, if you have kids and you think that 
your wife is a danger to them, then of course that's going to be a good remedy mm -hmm. to do. Or if you think that uh, your wife is going to harm you in some possible mm -hmm. way, then you may want to um, exclude her from the marital residence. Mm -hmm. Or if you think she's going to destroy or sell or do something to damage the property, mm -hmm. then you may want to exclude her from the residence as well. Before you would do that, though, I would highly suggest that you talk with your attorney before um, taking matters 